Hi everybody, I'm Bill Sanders and this is Watch Art Sci, the Art and Science of Watch Collection. Uh, today what we're going to do, we're going to take a look at watches by members of the prestigious AHCI, the Academy of Independent Programmers. Now, <clears throat> here's the sort of the, the tricky thing here. Uh, to some extent, we found a few in the past that had some that had either their price had gone down to the point that a lot more people could afford it, uh, or some of them we found a couple with uh, that had used some less expensive uh, movements, uh, primarily ETA movements, and then they, on top of that, they created uh, an interesting watch. And so what I want to do is to take a look at sort of going through some of these uh, AHCI members who also have what I'll call sort of more affordable watches in addition to the ones they have that are uh, you know, thousands and thousands, even hundreds of thousands of dollars. So we're going to start off with the Paul Gerber uh, Synchrono. Paul Gerber is one of the uh, AHCA members, AHCI members, and uh, his his outfit or his his shop is in Zurich, uh, Switzerland. And this particular watch is called the Synchron, and, and it's uh, 42 millimeters. It comes in a titanium case, and the new price on these is of uh, 48.75 uh, Swiss francs, which is about the same as a dollar. And and looking at this watch, uh, you may or may not like the style of the dial. I happen to like it. It's a very clean dial. Uh, it's got huge loom on the uh, even numbers and the hands. And it's a super a Lumo, Luminova. <laughs> anyway, okay, well, you're looking at this, so I said, well, you know, it's, <laughs> it doesn't look like much. Here's the thing that got me about it, though. You turn it over, and it, here it has three gold rotors. And I've never seen anything like that before. I mean, most rotors look like a sickle edge, just back and forth. Uh, and But these three are, are synchronized. <laughs> I'm not sure how they work, to tell you the truth. Uh, but... Each one of them is, and they are, they they wind together, and it could be that with the smaller ones that they do, they work better and something like that. But I'm really not sure. Um, the the movement is a synchronized triplet, uh, 18 karat gold rotor, and the basis is of the watch is a 2824-2, and if you look at the uh, uh, where they all connect, there's a gear that uh, Paul Gerber put in for winding the watch, and they all touch on that. Now, to me, this is something you're not going to find in your everyday watch. I mean, it's 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 a lot more expensive to put in not only gold rotors but three of them rather than putting in one and just you know that's the end of it. So. Uh, so this is one watch. Now, I saw one on Chrono24, I think it was for $2,888. Having a master watchmaker with a watch like this, I think, is would really be cool. <laughs> so at least it would be for me. Okay, um, moving right along. Now, we had talked about uh, Vincent Calabrese, uh, at earlier uh, on, a, on a previous video and primarily how he became involved uh, and how he helped create the AHCI. And uh, this is one of the watches uh, that he had. Again, this is for the more reasonably priced. It's a wandering hours watch and it has an optical effect as well. And the, the company that he has is called Novell uh, Orlogi Calabrese and our uh, NHC. If you're looking for one of these, just you can also look for NHC watches as well as under the name of uh, Vincent Calabrese. 
this one I, I really like. Uh, the Wandering Hours, uh, what you have is that you get the hour and it's in a little bubble with a pointer and it has a number in there and that's the time and then it points to the minutes. And so in the, uh, uh, the example there, it's uh, 550 or five, perhaps 549. And I have, wow, this is a very cool watch. Now this again, this is now this is seventy six hundred um, Swiss francs. It's not cheap, <laughs> and it, it does have an ETA twenty eight ninety two A two in it. Um, but I'll tell you, <laughs> it's just I mean, trying to find a watch with wandering hours by a uh, top uh, watchmaker or any watch uh, maker. I think Gorilla had one that was. They, uh, they had one something like this. It wasn't, it was more of several different uh, wandering hours or wandering uh, numbers on it. Okay, now this next, for some reason, uh, Bernhardt Letterer uh, has skipped my attention. <laughs> and I'm always looking for something new with uh, watchmakers. And one of the subscribers had mentioned him to me. I thought, oh, heck, you know, find out about this guy. And he's one of the AHCI members. And I found this one watch that I just think is, is extremely cool. Uh, it's called the Quartet. Now, oh, by the way, too, he has a thing called it's BLU, which is for Bernhardt Letter or Uni um, Universe. It's, it's, uh, it's one of the names he likes to use. As, as a business name, perhaps. You know, one of the things that we had talked about before when um, Daniel Roth, his company was owned by uh, Bugari, and they sort of phased him out after only a very short period of time, and then finally took his name off of any of the creations he had anything to do with, and he had to come up with some other kind of name. And I don't know whether uh, Bernhardt Letterer had to do the same thing with, and uh, uh, Vincent Calabrasi, but they, sometimes you'll see these names, and why not just call it, you know, that, well, it could, some, some things get problematic. Okay, well, let's look at the quartet. Now the quartet uh, has four indicators on it at uh, up at the top, the subdial where the Roman numerals is the hours. Uh, in the middle, uh, the little stick hand is for your seconds. Then you have a uh, retrograde minutes, which I just love. And then you have, uh, also at six o'clock, you have the uh, the dates in little, in, in triplets. Uh, some people say, oh, you know, how come you have all three of them together? I, quite frankly, I like it. Uh, the um, Parmigiani uh, watches have the same thing. And I've always liked it because sort of tells you what's next uh like you know if you're if you know the month is 30 days and you're, you're looking at the date then you can you can take a look at the next day now i would imagine on uh, since and unless as you have a perpetual calendar that's a little calendar that's with this watch is um is one where you're not going to have that. So if there's only uh, 30 days, you're still going to have 31. Uh, but I sort of like the looks of, you know, what was <laughs> what was yesterday, what's today. Uh, usually you can figure it out without a, a triple. I just happen to like it. it. Just gives you sort of opens things up. The back of the watch is uh, cased, and so you can't see anything uh, through that. He has a big, uh, the BLU for the Bernhardt Lettinger uh, Quartet. Now for a regulator, this watch has got everything. This is just wonderful. Not only are the indicators totally different. I mean, you have the subdial with the Roman numerals. You have the second hand. Um, I'm not sure where the pivot point is on this one. Um, it in terms of where the that uh, the outer ring is the retrograde is a little rainbow and then you have the other the uh, uh, the window for the for the date each different element has its own its own mechanism 
making it, of course, a regulator. Love this watch, twenty-eight eighty-eight. I hope that's the right price. <laughs> what I found it was. Now, <clears throat> we had talked about uh, Antoine Prezuzio, um, and we had looked at the trans world. We're going to look at it again quickly, but th let's just take a quick look here. Uh, this one um, is a, called the Sienna. Uh, it, it's really funny. If you put in Sienna, they'll try to make it with two ends and a lot of different things like this. Uh, but it's not. It's it's um, there was um, the Gothic hour hand on it is is from the Sienna clock. Now I think this one is hours only, and the uh, the movement is an ETA twenty eight ninety seven um, APG uh, two eighty two, and the. <laughs> Just a cool watch. I mean, there's uh, the idea of an hours only watch uh, means that you have to take a look at, you know, sort of figure you don't, you got about every uh, half hour it's going to be right on something. And I don't, I'm not sure whether I would like that or not. Uh, you know, being retired, it, <laughs> it wouldn't, wouldn't make as much difference for me. Um, but this is a, uh, this is sort of a cool watch and it's based on a historical element. Now, the problem, uh, here is finding these watches. The usual places that we go, places like, um, oh, Chrono 24, someplace like that, you can still find them there. Uh, but there's another place called, uh, Time Speaks in Japan and it's an auction house. And I spent a lot of time translating from Japanese to English to figure out what was going on. And it was, it was <laughs> very interesting. The, um, uh, the, the one on the left with the um, uh, leather or gator dial, the pre-owned one. Now this one was listed for 2156 as pre-owned at the uh, Timespeaks auction house. And they have sort of two, two um, they'll have two numbers. They're both in yen and you have to translate the yen to euro or dollars or uh, pounds sterling, whatever you use. And the one on the left is, I guess, a current bid. And then the one on the right is that if you want to get it right away. And so this is, you know, if you, if you feel comfortable uh, and getting these from Japan, uh, I would have no problem with it. <laughs> Whether I get it or not, it's another, another issue. I mean, not get it, not because I like it, but rather whether it get delivered after I have that one problem with that. Um, now the other one, the one on the right with the uh, metal bracelet, beautiful bracelet. And this is a new price of 6,500, uh, Swiss francs on that. Some of these, you, I, you know, this is the creative people, the mo most creative people I know are not the best business people. There are exceptions. I think that uh, F.P. Jorn is one. I think uh, Kali uh, Houghton Lannan is one. But some of these other guys, <laughs> they, I sort of wonder about it. The AHCI, I would, if, if I were, had a voice in that, which I do not, um, I would say, look, guys, why don't we have an AHCI website and we can sell our watches there? And I, you know, they could each have a little section. You just go down and pick the uh, brand you want, and then you could open up and have the prices there. And you know, it's not rocket science. And believe me, online is more and more businesses are are going online. The pandemic, of course, sort of underscored the importance of that. Uh, but with the Antoine uh, Prezuzio, they were, uh, the, the, another place they have them is in Russia. <laughs> what? And, and Antoine's in, in Switzerland. We can't buy them from Russia because of uh, the EU and the United States uh, problems with Putin's behavior. And so that's, that sort of shut that out. 
but you know, I, I there's no reason I can think of that they couldn't put up a <laughs> uh, a website somewhere and just poop right out through the website. Okay, enough of that. Um, I I I don't want to get started on my opinions of watch websites. They're pretty bad, though. I I mean all of them, <laughs> just about. Okay, well, enough of that, like I said. Now, this last one is the one we've already looked at um, with the, um, again, the ETA 2897 uh, with the blued screws and a number of other things that'll bring up the quality of the watch, of the, watch the world time zone, uh, Earth projection moving around. Uh, this watch is very, very cool, uh, 4520. Now, like I said, well, so they don't have a website, you just order it. The, I think the best route to take, if you can find them on Chrono24, do that. Otherwise, you sort of, you can deal directly with the watchmaker and uh, send them money and then or wire it and then they'll send you the watch. I don't know uh, if that's the most efficient way to do it, but I suppose they don't like having to spend money on uh, the extra money that it costs to have on Chrono 24. I, like I said, <laughs> I got my opinion about that. By the way, I'm wearing um, the Langenheim Frederick II. And the reason I'm wearing this is that Marco Lang, who uh, made this watch, is the current president of the AHCI. So, on that. Well, listen, um, this is the time, I think, for watch collectors to have some fun with these things. Go out and do some digging and find out what else you can find. And uh, this is, I went through, and most of these guys have something <laughs> like a list with the, the amount that it costs. They even tell you what the uh, base of it is. Others of them don't, or they have sort of this crazy thing. <laughs> so... But so my my advice or my urging is go out and find out about it. If you don't speak Japanese, uh, the um, oh, what, was that, what was it called? The um, Time Speaks uh, is 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 the good place to go and learn how to translate Japanese into whatever other whatever language you speak that's not Japanese, and you can get through that. It's, it's sort of fun. Okay, enough of that want to hear from you, like to hear your opinion, and uh, maybe you own one of these watches and you can tell us something about it. And until next time, this is Bill Sanders for Watch Art Side, the art and science of watch collection. <laughs>